Mother's Day is just around the corner. Okay, actually, it's this week. So obviously, I am thinking about my mom. Well, okay, I'm thinking about mom all the time because we, <laughs> we live a quarter of a mile apart. We won't talk about the unhealthiness of it. We will just talk about that. We are very close. We are wonderful friends, but also, this is who got me into baking. And growing up, you made a ton of things with what? Rhubarb. You did. You always <laughs> had rhubarb. You probably grew up with rhubarb too, I right? I did, yeah. Rhubarb. But was something of... grandma always made with it. Well, let's see. She often would make a rhubarb sauce. Oh, yeah. People always, I don't make rhubarb sauces. That's yeah, oh. it was. Yeah. But growing up, you made a lot of rhubarb crisp or pie, and I love rhubarb crisp. And one of the things is, when you kind of have modern times like these, we kind of change up recipes. Well, I do. And I love to change them up, add a little bit of other fruits, which add natural sweetness, so you can add less sugar. So this Chris is a little bit different probably than what you grew up making or I grew up making, but it's a riff on an original and I think you're gonna love it. So in honor of Mother's Day, we are gonna make it together. Disclaimer here, we don't bake together all the time anymore. So if you see hands crossing or see us kind of being like, what's going on? It's because we don't practice this. But it was kind of fun to do this for you guys. So obviously first we had to go get some rhubarb. And even though we live really close together, we both have separate rhubarb patches. So we went out to my patch and on the way had to talk about all the things mom wondered what they were when they showed up in my yard. <laughs> you always want to know. I do, uh -huh. I do. So we actually were talking as we were getting the rhubarb. Some people pull it out. I don't know if you really have to. It's oh, just, you can cut it out. I, I was gonna say, I I always cut, you always cut yours. Usually, and you, if it pulls easy, I pull okay. it. But... You always cut it though when I was little. Yeah. Probably Yay! did. Yes, I know. Yeah, you did. did. Yeah. So always cut the leaves off too, because apparently they're poisonous. But actually, recently I read that they're more just like really hard to digest for the human body. But let's go with poisonous and don't eat them. Yeah. Don't want to eat the leaves. We had to look at a few of the tree peonies that were blooming on the way back, but then we made it back into the kitchen, rinsed up that rhubarb, and then mom started chopping it. You just did a fine dice on it. Yeah, and you, some people like to leave it in big chunks. It doesn't That's true. have Actually, to be. Actually, you know, a lot of like the in trendy well, recipes anymore, I feel like leave these huge chunks. Well, if you buy it, it's in bigger chunks. If you, you buy can it. buy it pre chunked. I think so. Some grocery stores like, maybe carry it frozen. I am really sheltered in Iowa here. <laughs> Obviously, not all of you are going to have your own rhubarb patch, so you're probably going to want to buy it at a farmer's market. But hello, who doesn't like to go to a farmer's market? So as mom was dicing up that rhubarb, I added some delicious raspberries and then some blueberries. Really simple, just make sure they're washed and cleaned, add them to your bowl. And then I zested one lemon. If it's not big enough, you can zest a little bit more. Lemon zest is really normal actually in a lot of rhubarb recipes. Mm -hmm. it, one brings out the pectin, but also you need that tartness to kind of give it that flavor, flavor and yeah. sweetness. It's kind of mm -hmm. like the acid that you need. And then mom cut that lemon for me and I just juiced it right onto the raspberries and blueberries. So once you chopped up all the rhubarb, she just added that right in there. And then we added some sugar right on top of that. You need the sugar. Now I have less than the sugar and even as I was making it, mom said, is that all the sugar you're gonna add? You did, didn't you? Yeah, I did. Yeah. But honestly, that's why I add blueberries and raspberries. They have a right. lot more natural sweetness that's to right. them. So you really don't need as much sugar. I find some of those old recipes just kind of almost overdo it on the sugar and then you can't really taste the flavor. Well, and rhubarb is a tart. Yeah. And it's okay it, to be tart. Is it a vegetable or fruit? <laughs> <laughs> it's I it's don't a even fruit. know. No, it's a vegetable. It's a vegetable. Huh. It's a vegetable. Tomatoes a fruit, rhubarb is a vegetable. Okay. Kind of the opposites of what we think. Okay. You guys can correct me if I'm wrong because I know you well. And then we added some minute tapioca. That's really an old thickener that yeah. I kind of started using mm -hmm. to get. Used mm -hmm. to use that a lot when we yeah, were little. Yeah, I did. Used it in pies though, I guess mostly pies probably. Pies more than I did in, in crisps. Did you never use it in a crisp? I don't think so. Uh, well, I really like it in this crisp. <laughs> and vanilla. So we just mix that together and then I grease the baking dish. I kind of always grease the baking dish. I know for a crisp it's not necessarily normal, but it's just easier to clean up and I don't want to scrub that thing. No, right. No, I would spray it. You would? Okay. Yeah. Okay. 
Then we just poured it all in there, just evened it out. And then we had to make the delicious streusel topping. I love streusel well, topping. That's the best part. You need always to me extra of that. So for this, I did change it up a little bit again. Instead of adding all purpose flour, I added spelt flour, which mom wanted to know what spelt flour was. It's actually an ancient grain and a really old flour, and it has a little bit more nuttiness to it, the flavor, but apparently it's also easier to digest for some people. Okay, I don't have a problem, but I just like the nuttiness it really adds. And it's kind of a nice way to modernize the recipe, I think. Mm -hmm. It is. Do you really think so? Yeah, I do. Sometimes I'm it's hard for her to adapt to some it of these is. new things. I'm pretty old school. Mm -hmm. You're not old school. Mm -hmm. You look good for your age. I shouldn't say that. You look good no matter what age. Right, that's a better way to say that. Mother's Day's coming has got to be nice. <laughs> 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 then we just added some rolled oats. I always use old fashioned. I don't know if you did when we were growing up, but Either I kind of like that they have mm -hmm. a little bit more toothiness to them. More texture. Yeah, and then some dark brown sugar. And again, mm -hmm. I like to use dark brown because it has more flavor mm -hmm. than regular sugar. Just I a little agree. bit more of that molasses flavor. So if you can add more, why not? Mm -hmm. And then of course, I switched it up again. And instead of adding normal cinnamon, which is what a lot of times a rhubarb crisp will have, I added cardamom. Right. Which you were smelling it. What did you yeah. think it was like? What well, did it like, remind you of? It reminded me of like uh, chai. Yeah, it's exactly like a chai. chai. They use it a lot of times in chai, in chai teas tea. and in that mm -hmm. area of the world for cooking, they use it a lot. So I think it's just a fun way to add a different spice to switch up your regimen and try something different. Right, it is. And then just a little bit of salt because I use unsalted butter. So you want to add a little bit of salt, brings off the other flavors. flavors. And it's just a really good and needed addition. And then to finish it off, we just worked in some butter. Mm -hmm. It was room temperature softened butter. We let, I let my butter sit out for a few hours before I'm gonna use it. That way it's really soft. Mom just chunked it up and then it was easier for me to do it with my hands. I know growing up we always used a pastry cutter. use a pastry cutter. Or some people say two knives. That to me has always never made sense because no. I don't think that works that well. You sit there with no. two knives, it's like you're... No. Um, I'd use my hands before yeah. I would use two knives. I did use my hands. Yeah. A lot easier. And then we just evenly put that over the top. Mm -hmm. And then we put it right into the oven, but of course I had to put it on a parchment lined baking sheet because I don't like to clean the bottom of my oven. In case it would run over. Right, and I'm not gonna scrub that off the bottom because then it gets all gross and it smells gross. So put it right onto your parchment lined baking sheet, threw it into the oven. So it baked for about 45-ish minutes, maybe a little longer. The 45 important, minutes to an hour, probably. The important thing you want to do when you're using any thickener, but especially a minute tapioca, is make sure it's bubbling throughout, even in the center, because that's what's going to activate and actually melt out that tapioca. Otherwise, you'll get these hard granulars, right. and you don't want that. Mm -hmm. So when it's bubbling throughout, you know it's thickened. If you need to at the end, it's getting too dark, you could tint it with foil. Right, I would put a piece of foil over it. And that's just going to help it not get too dark. Right. Then we pulled it out and let it cool it off. You can serve it warm, of course, with a little bit of... Vanilla ice oh, cream. vanilla ice cream. <laughs> We're going all out today. Or whipped topping. The calories don't count on Mother's Day anyway, Not right? Not at all. No. Not at all. Mm -mm. Nope, they never do. And that's honestly how easy it was. Okay, we kind of did a lot of talking for how easy it was, but rhubarb crisp is one of the quickest mm -hmm. things you can do with rhubarb. It's quicker yeah. than a pie, there's no crust, it's delicious. Once you get it cut up, I mean, a lot of your, I mean, the cutting up takes as much time. That's almost. true. The cutting up does take a lot of mm -hmm. time. But mom does a really good job. I don't really go even. She does. <laughs> you too. You get even. And you always make sure every little piece is out of the, mm -hmm. that's good. She's mm -hmm. good at that. So this Mother's Day, if you don't have a chance to get into the kitchen with your wonderful mother, I hope you have a chance to at least get one of those nostalgic recipes out that remind you of your mother. Because mothers are pretty great. And if we have them around, we better enjoy the day with them or every day with them like I do. <laughs> uh, we enjoy every day, right? We do. Yeah, we do. We do. We, do. we never fight. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> I do. I do. I love you. Thank you for baking with me today. You're so welcome. Any day. I hope you all have a wonderful Mother's Day. If you like and agree with this wonderful recipe, make sure to click like below and subscribe to the Great Boxwood channel and share with us your favorite things on Instagram and Facebook because I love to hear from you all. From both of us to you, happy Mother's Day. Bye.